This year at Tina Brown's Women in the World Summit, which was held at Lincoln Center, we were introduced to Canadian doctor Fosia Alvi, who is helping the Rohingya Muslims who have fled persecution and the destruction of their homes in Myanmar and Southeast Asia. The persecution comes at the hands of their country's security forces that refuse to recognize the Rohingya people as citizens. But as they run from a place they once called home, they now seek asylum in Bangladesh. Dr. Fasia is there. She left her practice in Canada to travel to Bangladesh to administer aid to those in need. And she joins me now. Doctor, welcome to the program. Thanks, Jenna. There's so many conflicts going on in the world, unfortunately, right now um, that are creating these refugee crises. But tell me, what is happening in Bangladesh that so many Americans are unaware of? So, Jenna, um, in Bangladesh, there are about more than 700,000 um, people have come from Burma in the last um, six months after August, when uh, the Burmese army, they started a horrific campaign of violence and persecution. They started burning their houses to the last stick. So um, they were murdering their men and they were um, killing, um, lots of killing, you know, um, their people. They were throwing babies into the fire um, alive and throwing them to the river in front of their screaming mothers. So Rohingyas are indigenous people of Burma. They are living in Burma in their ancestral lands for centuries. Mm -hmm. So they were always citizens, they always voted until, last, uh, until 1988, when military government of uh, Burma, they stripped them of their citizenship. And at that time, the persecution against uh, those people reached to the level of um, apartheid. And now that has led to genocide. So I heard about it um, first time about Rohingya people back in 2015, when my husband, um, went to visit the Rohingya camps inside Burma. Those are literally the concentration camps of uh, 21st century. So my husband told me horrific stories of violence and forced starvation those people were facing. So that was my first introduction. And then last year, I heard that there are about 90,000 pregnant women, literally with a handful of doctors. So as a physician, I decided that I must help. That's when I had it to Bangladesh. Well, I mean, and that sounds like just every horrific uh, scenario that you could come up with, but I just want you to paint a picture a little bit of what uh, life is like for at least the patients that you're treating inside some of these camps. So, Jenna, I tried my best to take care of the people who were suffering in so many different ways. I had seen lots and lots of people with severe malnutrition. They were babies, they were malnourished, they were starving because their mothers did not have any breast milk to feed them. Um, they were adults with severe muscle wasting, small children with pot belly and really bulging eyes. All these are signs of long-standing starvation that these people were facing back in Burma before moving to Bangladesh. And I saw lots and lots of people with diarrhea, with severe dehydration, mm -hmm. because due to the lack of proper sanitation, lack of clean drinking water. What happened, that lots of people have arrived in Bangladesh in a very small period of time, like over 700,000, and with previous refugees, it's about a million. So the million people are living in a very small, cramped place, so the NGOs, the Bangladesh government, they are kind of struggling, you know, how to feed them, how to take care of them, because Bangladesh itself is the poorest country in the world. Well, what is it then that we can do as Americans, um, because we do like to think of ourselves, and I think are, in general, a generous country of people, but what is it that's needed and what can we do to help? Human beings are compassionate. They are, they are kind. They are, yeah. you know, they like helping out. So, but we have to get them out of their bubbles and media, you guys, play an important role in that. So, but are there like organizations that we can donate to or what's, what's the greatest need and where do we give it? So the greatest need is of course the um, support the organizations that are working on the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, remember those people in the prayers very well needed, but thoughts and prayers can only do so much. The good need is to 
um, we have to contact our congressman, or con contact our Senate to pass the bill, is uh, the bill 2060, that will impose sanctions of Burma, on Burma. Because we have to punish uh, Aung San Suu Kyi and her military government to stop this genocide and stop treating these Rohingya people like insects or animals. Mm -hmm. So, in order to do that, we have to impose full sanctions of, on Burma so we can bring and those criminals to justice. And we have to invoke the Genocide Convention. Mm. That will obligate us, that will obligate UN to um, punish them, because uh, otherwise there is no other way. These sanctions, they have worked in the past. They have worked for Iran. It brought them to the negotiating table. So those sanctions are going to work for Burma also. All right, so holding people to account for their actions. Listen, doctor, I want to thank you so much for joining us on the show and, of course, for your selfless work for these people. Thank you very much, Anna. Thank you. Thanks for having me.